hey everybody. Hey, some NIMBYs will go to pretty extreme lengths to get rid of an airport. You know, they might even resort to hiding something paid for by the taxpayers that doesn't support their position. Santa Clara County officials reportedly sat on a report about lead at Reed Hillview Airport in California. Uh, kept it hidden until a newspaper forced them to disclose it. So why did they sit on it? You can guess, because the report shows that soil at the airport contained lead levels below the local, state, or federal safety standards. Now, as you'll remember, Santa Clara wants to close Reed Hillview, and one of their excuses is that lead contamination from aircraft exhaust is having an effect on local kids. But, you know, an earlier report shows that blood levels in kids near the airport are no higher than what they are for kids living much farther away, but hey, why let facts get in the way? And then there's, we're just going to take our marbles and go home approach. Now, the courts have stalled the plan to turn East Hampton Airport into a private use prior permission required to use facility. So, since the courts have stopped them, the town on uh, Long Island has told its lawyers to do what they need to do to close the airport completely. AOPA and others have been fighting to keep the airport open, and you know, once it's closed, they may really regret that it has been closed. Now here's something that's pretty positive, teaching kids about aviation and getting them more involved. And one of the ways we do that is with the AOPA high school STEM curriculum. And you know, that curriculum is now in some 500 classrooms uh, for next year. And the teachers who are going to be teaching from that curriculum have been spending this week doing uh, professional development for it. So they are here at AOPA. That We have some 19 teachers at the You Can Fly Academy this week. They've been going through all kinds of activities, learning about aviation. Now, many of them went for airplane rides. That was a highlight for many of them, particularly the folks who got to fly in the extra. And they're excited to take what they've learned back into the classrooms. It is so much better to teach a course where the curriculum is predetermined as opposed to figuring it out. AOPA makes a wonderful, systematic, clear, able to be presented well. I'm, I'm fired up to deliver this curriculum to my students in the Bronx. There is another teacher professional development program coming up in July in Norman, Oklahoma. Now, all teachers in the curriculum can access the training online as well. It's really a great program and doing extraordinary well. And speaking of aviation careers, uh, have you ever wanted to order pilots about? Ah, well, here's your chance if you're a Gen Z or a young millennial. FAA is recruiting for new air traffic controllers. They've launched their BATC campaign. Applications open June 24th. And just a reminder, even though you, ATC might be telling pilots where to go, you don't always have to do what they tell you if it's going to be cause something to be unsafe or you're just not able to do it. Remember, one of the words in your pilot lexicon is unable. Well, a great event for young flyers, the third annual Young Aviators fly into Triple Tree Aerodrome in South Carolina. It's a beautiful 7,000 foot grass strip. Now this event was organized by young aviators, for young aviators, and even younger aviators had a blast taking young eagles rides. It was super awesome to see all these little kids come out that were so excited to get some of their first airplane rides and some of them came back for their second rides, which was awesome, also awesome. And um, it was so great to see them so excited and just ready to learn. And my second favorite part is just getting to talk to everybody who shows up, hear about where they're from, how they heard about Triple Tree, and kind of just what they like to do. I always love to meet new people and talk about airplanes. <laughs> There's another fly into Triple Tree September 19th through the 25th. <laughs> yeah, and even us old farts are going to be welcome at that one. And by the way, it's not only ATC that needs a few good young folks. The airlines are hiring in big numbers. They want pilots so badly that they're offering things like sign-on bonuses and four-day work weeks. And it's not just the airlines. Charter companies, particularly helicopters with the EMS, and they're not just pilots either that they're after. Mechanics, avionics, techs, flight nurses are all in demand. You can read more on our website. But it's you know really easy to see why everybody is in so, such demand. 
FlightAware says U.S. commercial traffic is way above 2020 and 21 levels, to up 10% from last year. Business aviation is up 67% from 2020. Now, FlightAware defines business aviation as turbine-powered aircraft, but we know that some 65% of all general aviation traffic, of piston general aviation traffic, is for business or public service travel. Uh, here's a look at their daily snapshot, and you can see in this that GA represents about 37% of uh, air traffic. That's the piston GA. BizAV is uh, about 10%, so that means at least on a given day today in the U.S., nearly half of all traffic which is general aviation. And here's a great use of general aviation. Last week, more than 120 GA aircraft flew Special Olympians to and from the games in Orlando. Uh, Textron Aviation sponsors the Special Olympics airlift. Now, Cessna, Beechcraft, and Hawker owners all volunteer their aircraft. For these delegations, the cost of transporting athletes to the game is their number one cost. And so it's a, it's a great honor and privilege for us to be able to call upon our customers who so generously donate their aircraft, their time, and the fuel to transport the athletes. We also are very fortunate to have, be able to call upon the industry. And so we have phenomenal support from the FAA and other partners in the industry. So it's just a beautiful opportunity to demonstrate how our aircraft, how private aviation can benefit the, the, the public at large. AOPA has donated aircraft and pilots to the airlift since uh, 2014, and the folks who fly say it's extraordinarily rewarding. And we'll be back in a moment. My name's Tom Rao. I've got about 18,000 hours total time as a pilot. There's certain things that you can see with an onboard radar, uh, and there's certain things you can't see. And the nice thing about SiriusXM's weather product is that it adds another layer uh, of safety, which you know really plays into the aeronautical decision-making process for me. It, it allows me to get a more strategic, big picture when I'm going to go uh, seven or eight hundred miles. You know, just facilitates decision making on a long range spectrum. The Sirius XM weather features that, that I engage in the airplane, of course, there, there's a selection. The wind feature and the ability to work out uh, route changes with center to take advantage of the wind is sort of a carryover from my airline days or in the Navy when we always felt like we didn't have enough gas. So being able to make gas literally by shortening its signal length, the, the wind feature is it's invaluable. The number of dollars saved as a result, I, I just don't think I can calculate it. Hey, welcome back. The new Air Force One will likely look like the old Air Force One. Well, probably. Now, you might remember that President Trump decreed a new paint scheme for the two 747-8s that Boeing is modifying to replace the existing presidential fleet. But uh, Political is reporting that the red and white blue scheme the former president asked for would cause heat problems. You see that dark blue along the belly uh, absorbs so much heat that it will heat up the electronics, and there's some pretty fancy electronics in Air Force One. Uh, in order to compensate for that, they would have had to do additional cooling, and that's going to drive up the costs. Now, the aircraft is being modified under a fixed cost contract, and there are huge cost overruns already, so Boeing is uh, really sweating it, and the White House scrapped Trump's new paint scheme. The new look, well, that's to be determined. But, you know, I can tell you, I always like the original colors. You know, they started way back in the Kennedy administration. And when I was living and working overseas, it was really spectacular to see that uh, aircraft arrive at a foreign port. Well, the White House reportedly will nominate a new FAA administrator soon. The Seattle Times says it will be Phil Washington. Now, he's currently the CEO of Denver International Airport. He doesn't have a lot of aviation experience. He was uh, previously the CEO of the Los Angeles Metro Bus and Rail System, but he did retire from the Army at the, as an Army Command Sergeant Major, so he certainly knows how to organize and run things. Now, he was the lead of the transportation team for the Biden transition, so that may explain why he's a front one runner. Uh, the White House hasn't commented or confirmed the report yet. And here's something new from Four Flight, the Sentry Plus. Now, it's a lot more than your standard ADS-B receiver. 
yeah, we'll connect your iPad and show you your position and flight plan and nearby traffic and weather. You also get an AHARS for uh, backup attitude indication, but it also has a carbon monoxide sensor. There's uh, even a G meter in there for you folks who like to fly a little aggressively. It's uh, just under 800 bucks. It's available from Sporties. You know, I fly with the original Sentry and it really is a great tool in the aircraft. And here's something else new, an electric Robbie. Uh, Tier 1 Engineering tested an all-electric Robinson R44 earlier this month. It flew for about uh, three minutes using the Magna X electric propulsion unit. The company says it's working on an STC for the electric conversion. Now think about this. LA to Tokyo in one hour. Well, that's what Venus Aerospace is promising with its hypersonic stargazer. It would take off with conventional jet engines, then transition to rocket power. They claim it will be zero emission rocket power. Mach 9 at flight level 170, uh, that's 170,000 feet. Now Venus is also planning to build a hypersonic drone. They've raised, uh, I don't know, some 33 million bucks to do both, or one million coming from the government. Uh, I think they're gonna need a lot more before they're done. And there you have it. <laughs> well, that's from our latest, one of our latest videos posted on our YouTube channel, How to Burp a Rotax 912. So why would you do that? Well, we'll explain in the video, of course. And by the way, we've gotten a lot of fun comments on the video, so that's worth checking out. And finally, what do you think about water skiing with your airplane? You know, that's when you fly level with your tires just touching the water. Good idea, stupid pilot trick. Well, we got two experts to engage in a dogfight of opinions. You can read both sides and decide for yourself who is right. Uh, it's at the link in the upper right corner of the screen. Me, I'm gonna stay away from the water, but that's just me. And that's News Brief for this week. You've heard this before, but what the heck? Please like, subscribe, and comment. We'll see you next Friday.